My name is Dave Foster. Uh, I've been here with Patty Engineering for over 18 years. I'm the Vice President of Engineering. Hi, my name is Ken Kuchek with Patty Engineering. Uh, I've been with the company uh, for 15 years now. I'm the Vice President of Operations. Hi, I'm Sam Hoff. I'm president here at Patty Engineering. We'll be celebrating our 22nd year in business next year. And we're hosting an open house today. It's a joyous occasion. Um, Control Engineering Magazine uh, names a System Integrator of the Year every year in our volume level. And we won that. It's a national competition. And we want it a lot of due mainly to positive uh, feedback from our customers and the way we run our business and the uh, positive feedback from our employees that work here. This company, Patty Engineering, we started in 1991. It was me and a laptop named after my uh, new bride at the time. 94 I started hiring employees. 2000 we moved to this building and actually it was 12 years ago almost to the day that we dedicated this building and Tom McMillan who was the mayor of Auburn Hills at the time and Brooks Patterson spoke at my dedication. Um, 2004 we hit a milestone, we, we kind of made a, thought we were really big stuff. And then, um, uh, you know, 2007 to 2009 like any company, but especially us, it, it was a struggle, it was a huge struggle. And it, it, you know, the one thing about struggles like that, it, it, it forces you to get a lot better about how you run your business. And we, and we had to reinvent ourselves. In 2007, they started an award for System Integrator of the Year. They actually have three different levels. We applied this year. It was actually the first time we ever applied for the award, and we won it. So, the National Award. Yeah, I'm going to be on the cover of a magazine this month. It's not the Rolling Stone. Control Engineering Magazine, but so uh, anyway. Hi, I'm Rick Schoonover. I'm the Director of Business Development for Patty Engineering, and I've been with Patty Engineering for just over two years. So in addition to being responsible for business development, I am also the Ambassador of Fun here at Patty Engineering. And we have a program where every month, the engineers can choose some fun activity to do, and then we do it as a, as a group.
This is where I live. I live in Kenya, at the south parts of the Nairobi National Park. Those are my dad's cows at the back, and behind the cows, that's the Nairobi National Park. Nairobi National Park is not fenced in the south where I live, which means wild animals like zebras migrate out of the park freely. So predators like lions follow them, and this is what they do. They kill our livestock. This one of the cows which was killed at night, and I just woke up in the, in the morning and I found it dead, and I felt so bad because it was the only bull we had. My community, the Maasai, we believe that we came from heaven with our, all our animals and all the land for hurting them, and that's why we value them so much. So I grew up hating lions so much. The Morans are the warriors who protect our community and the livestock, and they are so upset about this problem. So they killed the lions. It's one of the six lions which were killed in Nairobi. And I think this is why the Nairobi National Park lions are few. So a boy from six to nine years old in my community is responsible for his dad cows. And that's the same, same thing which happened to me. So I had to find a way of solving this problem. And the first idea I got was to use fire, because I thought lions were scared of fire. But I came to realize that that didn't really help, because it was even helping the lions to see, to see through the caution. So I didn't give up. I continued. And the second idea I got was to use a scarecrow. I was trying to trick the lions that I was standing near the cow shed. But lions are very clever. <laughs> <laughs> they will come the first day, and they see the scarecrow, and they go back. But the second day, they'll come and they say, this thing is not moving here. It's always here. <laughs> so <laughs> it jumps in and kills the animals. So one night, I was walking around the cow shed with a torch. And that day, the lions didn't come. And I discovered that lions were afraid of a moving light. So I had an idea. Since I was a small boy, I used to work in my room for the whole day. And I even took apart my mom's new radio. And that day, she almost killed me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I learned a lot about electronics. <laughs> so, I got an old car battery, an indicator box, the small device found in the motorcycle, and it helps motorists when they want to turn right or left, it blinks. And I got a switch, where I can switch on the lights on and off. And that's a small touch from a broken flashlight. So I set up everything. As you can see, the solar panel charges the battery, and the battery supplies the power to the small indicator box, I call it a transformer. And the indicator box makes the lights to flash. And as you can see, the bulbs face outside because that's where the lions come from. And that's how it looks to lions when they come at night. The lights flash and trick lions that I was walking around the cow shed, but I was sleeping in my bed. <laughs> Thanks. So I set it up in my home two years ago, and since then, we have never experienced any problem with the lions. And my neighboring homes heard about this idea. One of them was this grandmother. She had a lot of uh, animals being killed by lions. And she asked me if I can put the lights for her, and I said, yes. So I put the lights. You can see at the back, those are the lion lights. Since now, I've set up seven bombers around my community and they're really working. And my idea is also being used now in all over Kenya for scaring other predators like hyenas, leopards, and also it's also being used to scare elephants away from people's farms. Because of this invention, I was lucky to get a scholarship in one of the best schools in Kenya, Brookhouse International School.
and I'm really excited about this. My new school now is coming in and helping by fundraising and creating an awareness. I even took back my friends to my community and we're installing the lights to their homes which don't have and I'm teaching them how to put them. So one year ago, I was just a boy in the savannah grassland, hiding my father's cows. And I used to see planes flying over. And I told myself that one day I'll be there inside. So and here I am today. Uh, I got a, a chance to come by plane for my first time for TED. So my big dream is to become an aircraft engineer and pilot when I grow up. I used to read lions, but now because my invention is saving my father's cows and the lions, we are able to stay with the lions without any conflict. Surely, it means in my language. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you have no idea how, how exciting it is to hear a story like yours. So, you've got this scholarship. Yep. You're working on other electrical inventions. What's yeah. the next one on your list? Um, my next invention is I want to make an electric fence. Electric fence. But I know electric fences are already invented, but I want to make mine. <laughs> Did, <didn't laughs> you already tried it once, right? And you <laughs> I've tried it before, but um, I, I stopped because uh, it gave me a shock. <laughs> <laughs> In the trenches. Richard Terreri, you are something else. We're going to cheer you on every step of the way, my friend. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh